Hey, um, thought I'd shoot a quick video because I've never done anything like this before and uh, it might be interesting to some of you. Um, I'm, I did some reading and I found out that Siberian Elm may have some of the same characteristics as, uh, as a, uh, slippery elm in that it's, uh, mucilaginous bark that helps with conditions like irritable bowel syndrome and ulcers and, um, it soothes coughs and there's a whole myriad of, uh, herbal remedies that people are using slippery elm for and it's becoming endangered and over-harvested, so... Um, I decided to give Siberian Elm, which is a weed in western Colorado here, a try. Um, so you can see here, I'm trying to see if the light is good enough that you can tell what I'm working with. I've used a draw knife to cut away the bark. This is the inner wood layer here, and this is the bark layer. And then... I've used a draw knife, which you can see right here. Um, that's a draw knife. And then you end up with strips like this. And I par I'm partly making this video, I'm really bad at making videos, but I'm partly making this video because I wasn't able to find anything about this on the internet. Um, so you peel off the bark with the draw knife and you end up with these strips of bark that have outer bark and inner bark. And then what I've been doing, and it's easier with two hands, but I've just been cracking the outer bark away. You can kind of see that it just peels away from the inner bark. And the inner bark's nice and white under here, and then in a few minutes it oxidizes and turns a little bit brownish. Um, then I've got my pile of inner bark here that I've stripped away. And then apparently you just let it dry and... Um, grind it up and turn it into a powder and you can add it to beverages or medicines and salves and um, we'll see where it goes. Um, I did do a little bit of a test. I took a bite of the inner bark and it is very mucilaginous so it doesn't taste bitter at all. It's kind of sweet and neutral in flavor so we'll see how it goes and I don't mind at all damaging these trees because we've got so many of them on the property. You can see over here, this is a concrete foundation that was poured before we bought the property. And, and then it was abandoned for a few years. And all of these elms are between three and seven years old and they're just taken over. So trying to figure out a way to uh, get rid of them without poison. And maybe this is the answer. We'll see. Thanks for watching. So I wanted to add a few notes now that I've been working on this for a half hour or so, getting used to it. Um, some tips if you decide to try this on your own, and I encourage you to do so and let me know how it goes. Um, this tree, I think, right here, it's got a circumference of maybe two and a half, no, probably more like three inches. and. Uh, Anything I've tried smaller than that has this immature bark that doesn't have uh, as much thickness to it as this, and it's really hard to peel this thin stuff off of the um, off of the inner bark. So the older saplings are definitely better for extracting the inner bark, and uh, if you come across any knots like this. Not only does it make it hard to peel off of the tree in one chunk, but it makes it hard to separate the outer bark from the inner bark. So just thought I would add those observations and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Bye.